Ubisoft Chivalry Clone took us by surprise when benchmarking the Four Honor beta over the last few days. The game makes use of high detail textures and relatively complex geometry to orchestrate what comes across as a deeply detailed environment. Even the animations, like running down the stairs, are animated to a point of detail we don't often see in multiplayer brawlers. Today we're benchmarking our NVIDIA and AMD suites of GPUs in the Four Honor beta that was released just for the last few days. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Catalyst Gaming Mints, an energy boost designed for gamers while eliminating the dyes, sugar, and calories and chemicals that traditional energy drinks contain. Use code GAMERSNEXUS at the link in the description below for 5% off. Before getting started here, the usual disclaimer, For Honor right now is in beta. The game will fully ship on the 14th, so it's really not that far away. Most things are probably pretty final, but there's still a few things that are missing from the game. For example, the lower resolution texture settings, so when testing, we're basically limited to high resolution textures. That means we don't have a good idea of how two gigabyte cards will handle when you have the ability to reduce the texture quality. Further, there's the question of drivers. NVIDIA presently has some beta ready drivers for the game, for Honor, but AMD, we did email them, they don't have any ready yet. We asked them if they had a press version that would be ready for this benchmark, and the answer was no, not yet. They will be ready on day one, launch day. And we'll have to revisit at that time to see how their drivers improve performance. But for now, we're still testing anyway. Overall, the performance wasn't bad. It's just that driver tuning may improve some of the low end performance in terms of the frame times that we see here in this benchmark. So keep all of that in mind. The graphics settings in For Honor are straightforward. The game, again, is locked to high texture quality and defaults to using temporal anti-aliasing for a frame to frame AA that reduces shimmering and marching ants effects. And the rest is your usual mix of geometric detail, dynamic shadows, and environment detail. To learn specifically what each setting does, check out our article linked in the description below, which has some definitions of all the settings in the game. For the usual research before doing the testing, we found that the game's built-in benchmark is really not reliable. It makes the game look a lot worse than it is in actuality. When benchmarking, even just with bot matches, we see generally the same performance in a bot match as in a multiplayer match, so that's a good thing. They're very consistent between each other. The maps are all pretty consistent within a couple FPS of each other. And then the built-in benchmark is just, it's a lot worse. And primarily in the frame times, the frame times are lower. And it's also not really built in a way that you're ever gonna be playing the game. It's effectively a spectator mode that's on speed. So we did not use the built-in benchmark, we used our own, which at some point has played during this video and you can see it if you wanted to replicate it. We tested in a bot match, but also validated with gameplay and found performance to be largely comparable when in and out of combat, as the maps are complex to begin with and are what's causing most of the processing. Drivers used were 17.1.1 for AMD and 378.49 for Nvidia. Again, for full test methodology, check the link in the description below. First, here's a brief sample of the game's built-in bench that I was just talking about versus our own. This is with a GTX 1066 gigabyte card just for a baseline, and we'll look at the full chart with all the other GPUs in a moment, but for now, we're seeing a huge performance hit in the 0.1% and 1% low values, and averages are also down overall. Because the built-in benchmark doesn't represent real gameplay at all, we're going to stick with our own test course for the rest. 4K is the start of that. 4K is a lot more abusive than lower resolutions with this game, more so than normally. With the GTX 1080 FTW at full tilt, we're seeing an average FPS of 52, with lows close by at 48 and 45 FPS. The MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X operated at 42 FPS average, also with acceptably timed lows. And the RX 480 isn't really meant to be a 4K gaming device, but we threw it on here anyway, with frame rates lower than 30 FPS, as we're seeing here with the 480, you actually risk being kicked by multiplayer lobbies because of Ubisoft's P2P design for networking. So that's kind of an interesting problem you don't normally face. Moving on to the more reasonable 1440p, we immediately see nearly every card on the bench is capable of an average FPS exceeding 50, aside from the RX 470 and GTX 1050 Ti 4 gigabyte cards. The pack is expectedly led by the GTX 1080 FTW at over 100 FPS average, Again, with our frame times tightly packed enough that there's no noticeable stuttering. The same remains true as we run through the ranks, though for the most part, the GTX 1070 is running at 82 FPS average, or about 20% slower than the 1080. The 1060 Gaming X 6 GB is at just under 60 FPS average, and the stepping is pretty easy to follow thus far. It's about 20 FPS between each of these three devices. We next hit the R9 390X at 57 FPS average, and then the RX 480 Gaming X with roughly the same performance. 
and these lows are hurting here, but we'll reserve judgment until the game's promised day zero, quote unquote, release drivers. For now, let's highlight all the AMD 1% and 0.1% low frame time performance issues as possibly related to unfinished drivers, and we'll revisit when they ship the driver package. The GTX 1063 gigabyte is next on the bench, producing FPS noticeably slower than its six gigabyte counterpart. Note that this is partly because of the increased clock speed of the Gaming X, but the low performance dips are primarily resultant of the halved VRAM and one removed SM from the GPU. And these new RX 470 posts performance above the 1050 Ti as our initial 1050 Ti review would lead you to expect. And we're also entering territory where 1440p is not really necessarily likely on this hardware anyway. So let's move on to 1080p. With 1080p and the same extreme settings that we've been testing with, the EVGA GTX 1080 FTW is now capable of running the game with max settings while sustaining a 144Hz refresh compatibility. The 1070 Gaming X isn't too far behind, again about 17-20%, to 20%, with the 1060 Gaming X 6GB just ahead of the RX 480 8GB card. Again, the RX 480 and other devices from AMD are posting generally lower frame times that we didn't visually detect by human means anyway, any serious jarring stutters until running on the RX 460 2GB card. Drivers potentially play a role in this. The R9 390X and RX 480 are effectively identical in performance, both leading the GTX 1060 3GB SC card. And this is where we're starting to see the 3 versus 6GB disparity popping up more noticeably. The RX 470 runs more than playable, and the lows aren't bad enough to ruin the experience. Even the lower end GTX 1050 Ti is able to operate at about 60 FPS average, with the 1050 SC not too far behind. This final chart looks at FPS scaling when using a mid-range card, so that'd be aggregate data between the 1060 and 480. With this data, we're using a baseline of high and showing the performance percentage offset from that. You lose about 25% of the performance by going from high to extreme with these cards, but the gains from high to medium are basically zero. This might change as more texture resolutions are implemented into the final version, because again, we're stuck on high for now, but low is showing a bigger impact than medium and high. We're seeing dramatically improved performance, but the game does actually look noticeably worse. So entering the conclusion, let's start by reminding everyone that this is again an incomplete title. There's going to be changes for sure to the game itself, and that would include texture resolution as the most obvious example. And AMD will launch some drivers, they tell us. NVIDIA tells us they're improving their drivers further. So that means things will shift, but this provides a good baseline. It won't shift that much. At most, we can probably expect some frame time improvement from AMD. We can expect some differences in the scaling from low to medium to high because of the texture resolution, but extreme, which is what we tested at, should remain the same. And you'll just have some offset from there by whatever percentage AMD and NVIDIA improve with their drivers. So we've got a baseline. From the baseline, we can see that the game can be handled pretty well on really almost anything at 1080p from the 1050 Ti and up from NVIDIA or the RX 470 and up from AMD. The RX 460, as we stated with our review of the card, is still not the best value for its uh, competition. The 1050 Ti and 1050 are pretty competitive there, but the RX 470 does still make more sense than the 1050 Ti uh, given the price point of the average AIB partner models. The 1050 struggles a little bit, but it's really not bad. It just kind of depends on the workload of the particular scene that you're rendering. And everything else, 1440p is fine on 1060s and 480s and up. And 4K does pretty well on the GTX 1080. But again, that's a GTX 1080, so you would hope so. We're getting about 60 FPS there. That's with extreme settings, basically completely maxed out other than super sampling and we're hitting 60. So that's what you can expect for performance. See maybe some improvements derived from the drivers as mentioned, uh, but we'll revisit those as necessary once the game approaches launch. As always, thank you for watching. Patreon link in the post scroll video to help us out directly. Link in the description below for the full test methodology and for the article about this topic. And subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. You know what's really annoying is uh, games with a prepositional phrase at the beginning of the title. So whenever I want to say for honor, I have to say for for honor. <laughs>